نَسْتَعِينَهُ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُهُ وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيِّئَاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا مَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَهُ وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Indeed, our praise and glory belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him. We seek His aid and His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evils inside of us and from our evil actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomsoever Allah leaves astray, none can guide. I testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is one and he has no partners. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is his servant and final messenger to the whole of mankind. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. We have reached the blessed month of Ramadan. And this should be a time of joy and delight for every Muslim. Alhamdulillah. And so we're going to, inshallah, in the khutbah today, remind ourselves of the virtues of this blessed month, the virtues, the barakah of this blessed month. And some of the actions like fasting and reading Quran and the ajr that we get, and some of the beautiful lessons and benefits we will derive, inshallah. So in respect of the virtues of this month, the fact that, alhamdulillah, we have reached Ramadan, this is such a nema from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, such a barak and a blessing that we don't really appreciate. There's one beautiful hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu He explains beautifully how much shukr we should have that Allah allowed us to witness Ramadan. So the hadith is like this. The, one of the Sahaba narrates, there were two companions at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And they entered into Islam at the same time. So their journey starts in Islam, all their sins are forgiven. They take out their journey starts at the same time. One dies a shaheed, the highest thing, the greatest rank, shaheed. And the other dies a year after him. So he lives a year longer. He doesn't die a shaheed, not as noble a death, but he lives a year longer. So Sahaba, one Sahaba says, I have a dream. And in that dream, I saw that the one who lived a year longer entered Jannah before the Shaheed. Does it make sense? Why? Because Shaheed, Shahada, dying in the path of Allah is the most noble thing that you can do. So you would think he would enter Jannah first. No. The one who, li one who lived a year later, a year longer, he entered Jannah first. He said, I went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Why is this? He said, did not the one who lived a year longer fast one more Ramadan? and do 6,000 more ruku. SubhanAllah. So what was it that leapfrogged him into Jannah before the Shaheed? The fact that he fasted and prayed the Salah and fasted the month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. This is the barakah and blessing. Are we on this blessed month? Alhamdulillah. When you think about that, it's such a huge reward to motivate and inspire us. But when we enter Ramadan, we see people in different camps. And it has been said that the best month for the believer is Ramadan and the, but the worst month for the Munafiq is Ramadan you know for the Munafiq he dreads Ramadan hates is the worst month for him why because the, for the Munafiq the desires rule his life all he does is rules and what's the, one of the strongest desires is to eat and drink eat and drink the most base of desire we need it it's, we have to do it, obviously, but this, mode, this, this is what inspires his whole life. This is why we see on the TV all these cooking programs, everything is about food, food, food. So if that's your life, if that's what you focus your life on, Ramadan is so dreadful. Imagine, 14 hours, I can't eat, I can't drink. And if your stomach is the most important thing, Ramadan is the worst month for you. Your Munaf, this is a, a sign of that. This is why when you speak to non-Muslims, they find Ramadan so difficult. This is understandable from a non-Muslim point of view because obviously they don't have Iman. It's understandable. <coughs> but when the Muslim thinks like that and he dreads Ramadan, he dislikes it. Why? Because of his stomach is his priority, there's a problem. Yet for the believer, it's the best one. He's still going to feel hungry, still going to feel thirsty, but he knows the most important part of my body is not my stomach. It's my heart. It's my heart. This is the most. This is Allah says in Quran. We know that that the heart is the heart is pure. Everything is pure. So the heart is the. And what is the food of the heart? It is the ibadah of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. It is fasting. It is Quran. It is dhikr. It is du'a. This is the month of Ramadan. So for the believer, the Ramadan is the best month. He's still hungry and thirsty, but he's getting that buzz. Why? His heart is being moved. He's alhamdulillah. He's feeding his heart. Whereas for the monafik. The, all that ruled his life was his stomach. 
he reaches Ramadan, long faces, everything. Why? Because now this is it, I can't eat and drink. This is a beautiful description of how people differ in their approach to Ramadan. The barakah of Ramadan. We know the reason that we have been created. Allah says, I did not create the jinn and the mankind except to worship me. The reason we exist is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, you are a father. Yes, you are a bus driver. Yes, you are this and that. You are a mother. These are, but these are secondary to your purpose in life, which is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Quran, I didn't create you except for you to worship me. This is the month of ibadah. In the 12 months of the year, which is the month where your ibadah is better than any other month, everyone will say Ramadan. In the Ramadan, the believer, even the good Muslim, is at a higher level. In the Ramadan, the sinner sins less in Ramadan. This is the barakah of Ramadan. Everyone goes a higher level. This is the wings of Ramadan. You see people, they don't pray, they don't do anything. When Ramadan comes, they start fasting. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. We don't mock those people, we don't ridicule them, we don't say, what's the point, you're fasting, you don't do this. No, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, they're fasting. My brother now, you need to pray as well, etc, etc. This is the barakah of Ramadan. Somebody said to me, look, you don't know many people drink alcohol and do drugs. I said, I know many of these people. Because when Ramadan comes, nearly every one of them stops and turns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the one who's doing haram and this and that. This is the barakah of Ramadan. This is the blessing of Ramadan. This is why this is, and Allah supports his Ramadan. In a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he says, when Ramadan comes, the gates of Jannah are open. Finally, the gates of Jannah. And Jahannam are closed. And Shaateen are locked up. Allah is making it easy, easier for us to worship him subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all the blessings and the barakah of Ramadan. So Ramadan, of course, is tiring, you feel hungry and thirsty. But you have to motivate and inspire yourself with such a wonderful time. Next we look, what are we doing in Ramadan and the great rewards that we get? We're doing so many things. When you think of Ramadan, you think of fasting. Yes, of course, that's the core extra ibadah. There's so many different acts of worship all linked to Ramadan. Let's remind ourselves of some of them, inshallah. So the first and the most important thing, extra thing in Ramadan is of course the act of fasting. And what a huge reward you get. In a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, there are, there's a gate of Jannah called Babur Rayyan. Imagine Jannah, where you're going to live forever, never hungry, never tired, never thirsty. And it's got gates. And one of those gates is the gate of Jannah. Babur Rayyan is the gate of Jannah. And it should be said, call those who enter the fasting ones. The ones who fasted will be called and they'll enter through this gate. Imagine your name is called Muhammad or Bilal or Fatima or Rubina. Come! Enter into Jannah, into the Barbara and through this gate. Why? Because of your fasting. And when the last one has entered, the gate, that gate will be closed. SubhanAllah. Imagine, just imagine on that day you're entering into Jannah. Why? Because of what you're doing right now. Because of your fasting. Ameen. May Allah make this all of us. Ameen. Alhamdulillah. This is a barakah, reward of fasting. Can you, can you think about that? In another hadith of the Prophet wasallam, he talks about the reward of fasting. Very special. He said every act of the son of every act, every good deed is rewarded many times over, up to 700 times. It's the rahmah of Allah. So you do something, Allah rewards it many times over. Then he says, except for fasting, it is for me and I will reward it. Something special. All the good deeds and fasting is for me and I will reward it. He stays hungry and thirsty for my sake. Allah's reckoned that he stays hungry and thirsty for my sake. There is two times of joy for the fasting person. When he opens his fast, look at the practical mercy of our religion. Alhamdulillah. When we open our fast, it's a moment of joy. You see, Alhamdulillah. So uh, Hadith says, two times of joy for the fasting person. When he opens his fast and when he meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine again, taking you back to Akhirah. The first hadith was about Jannah. Take it again to Akhirah. When you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there will be a moment of joy for you. Alhamdulillah, the fasting will come. It will support you. Moment of joy. And the smell coming from the mouth of the fasting person is better with Allah than the smell of musk. Subhanallah. That smell that comes out and you think is dry and you know, it's putting people off. With Allah Azawajal, that smell is better than the most beautiful mosque. Alhamdulillah. And we're earning all of this. So although we're looking tired, except all of this ajr we're getting. Alhamdulillah, because we're fasting today. This is the barakah and the rewards of fasting. 
Ramadan is not just about fasting, it's about much more than that. The next thing I want to mention is the importance of Qiyam or praying the Taraweeh prayer. In a hadith, the Prophet said, Whoever stands in night prayer, the Taraweeh prayer, whoever stands in night prayer with Iman and hoping for reward, all of his sins will be forgiven. Look at the ajr. It's like, like the wind is coming here. Look at the reward we're getting. All your inshallah, your sins will be forgiven. Why? You, you stayed up in Salah, uh, Qiyam, with Iman, you got Iman, and hoping for reward. See, as oh Allah accept you, hoping, may Allah accept it. Alhamdulillah. So this is the Qiyam. So it's very important we pray the Taraweeh prayer. We come, of course we can pray at home. When you come in the masjid, you see the brothers prayed by the Imam, he's reciting more Quran, it's important. You get the Ajr of praying in Jama'ah for the Salat al-Isha. So it's important we pray the Qiyam. Very important. But, one of the mistakes that people do is that they make all of this effort to pray the Qiyam and then they don't care about their compulsory Salah. This is wrong. What is Farah comes before what is voluntary. So you must pray your Farah. It's more important. Most of you must pray your Farah Salah and you are encouraged to pray the Qiyam and inshallah your, your sins will be forgiven. So this is the month of fasting. The month of extra Salah. And it is the month of Quran. Allah describes in Quran, in Quran itself, that Ramadan is the month in which Quran was sent down. So Allah, this, this is the, the pairing. Ramadan is paid alongside, alongside with the Quran. And we see another important linking in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He says, on Yawm al fasting and the Quran will intercede on Yawm al Allah. Imagine, fasting and the Quran will intercede on Yawm al Fasting will say, he stayed hungry and thirsty for my sake, let me intercede. So what we do now, our hunger and thirst, fasting, the psalm will speak, in the manner Allah decrees, as fasting will say, he stayed hungry and thirsty for my sake, let me intercede. And Quran will say, he stayed awake at night for my sake, let me, let me intercede. And they will be allowed to intercede. SubhanAllah. Imagine, there is you. There is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is Malaika, there is Quran, there is fasting. Imagine the scene that you're in. Alhamdulillah, when you're petrified and you're, you need someone who will intercede on my behalf, who will say anything on my behalf, and the fasting will come. This ajr, the fasting will come. Fasting will speak and what Allah say. He stayed away, he struck Quran will speak. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Who will not spend the night reading Quran? It's the ajr of Quran. Alhamdulillah, Ramadan is the month of Quran. So we're fasting, we're praying extra salah, we're reading Quran, we're making dua. In a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he said three, the duas of three people will not go unanswered. And one of them is the dua of the fasting person. You know, every one of us has got something that burns our heart. This is dunya. Every one of us in this room, there is something that's troubling us. Maybe it's a child, maybe it's a parent, maybe it's money, maybe it's health. Every one of us has that pain. The only one who will remove that pain from your heart is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is only until we turn back and we make dua and Ramadan is the month of dua. Ramadan is the month of constantly making dua, especially at the time of opening your fast. That is the time to call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan is the month of dua. Finally, Ramadan is the month of sadaqah. Again, we're talking in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that he sallallahu alayhi wa was the most generous of people. Of course he was. In every good attribute, he'll be the best. He was the most generous of people. More so in the month of Ramadan. When Jibreel alayhi salam will come to him and teach him the Quran. Again, what is the Quran again? In that month, his generosity was like the rain bearing wind. You imagine the wind comes and it's bearing rain and it knocks like a hurricane. This is the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Giving, 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 giving. Sadaqa. Give, give, give. How many people? Today, alhamdulillah, every one of us, I am sure, inshallah, has iftar. We know what we're going to have. We can have a meal. Every one of us. There are many people in the world today. Our brothers, we call them our brothers and our sisters. They don't have food for iftar tonight. Really, many of them. Many of them. How will the father look in his child's face? When the child asks him for food and he's got no food for him for iftar, there will be people like that in this dunya today. Allah has blessed us as well. Yes, we're living in a cost of living Christ. Yes, but Allah has blessed us as well. Give, 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 and Allah will give to you. Give, 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 and Allah will give to you. This is the month of sadaqah. 
So these are the actions of Ramadan. And we close with the many blessings that we get. What are we learning? We're gaining taqwa. We're learning sabr. We're becoming patient. This is the most important quality. Allah is teaching us sabr. Allah is teaching us shukr to appreciate our food. Allah is telling us about brotherhood when we come and pray taraweeh together. Allah is showing us as a family when we eat together, together in the time of iftar. Allah is saving our money when we eat less, when we spend money, less money on food. When we become healthier, all with the barakah of Ramadan, spiritual barakah, sabr, shukr, community, family, wealth, money, alhamdulillah. All of these are barakah raining down upon us for the month of Ramadan. We just need to make that effort and accept his gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أقول قل هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفر إنه الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم. So Ramadan is a month of doing, and we describe all the doing, fasting, Quran, etc. But it's also a month of refraining as well. And we see this again from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where he says, "Allah has no need for the one who does who does not give up lying or bad speech and bad action to leave his food and drink. Meaning, it's not just about leaving your food and drink. You have to stop your bad speech and you have to stop your bad action. So Ramadan is the month of stopping and cutting out all of that sinful behavior. We all do sins. Maybe we lie." Maybe we look at haram, maybe we listen to haram, maybe we do this and that. This is the month of doing the good deeds and cutting out the bad deeds. Whatever that thing is, this is the month of that. Struggling against your nafs, pushing yourself. And the scholars have described fasting of different levels. The most basic fast is what we're doing, no food and drink. Fasting more than that is the fasting of the eyes, the fasting of the ears, the fasting of the hands. And higher than that is the fasting of the heart. So this Ramadan, we need to do the good things and less of the things that don't benefit. This is important. We need to do less work in Ramadan. Ideally, less study in Ramadan. Obviously, we have to work and study, but less, more time on ibadah. We should be minimizing social media. We should be saying, from now, I'm not going to use Instagram and Snapchat and Facebook and etc. I'm going to, I'm going to fast from this. With so much of our time is spent on these things, we should be doing less sport. We should be doing less socializing. We should be giving time for ibadah. This is the real one. He wants to do all of these things. Something has to go. Something has to give. But if you're working the same, and studying the same, and socializing the same, and social media the same, where is your time for your ibadah? You think you're going to... No, you're not. You're going to feel so exhausted after day five, I can't carry anymore. This is the way. So Ramadan is a month of doing the good and lessening of the evil. And Allah has assisted us. The shayateen are the month, they are locked up in this time. So this is the time everyone thinks, what is the evil that I do that I'm going to minimize and remove from this Ramadan? So that this Ramadan is my best Ramadan. Inshallah. Allahumma ikhulina the nubil wa kafrana sayyatina. Allahumma kina adab al dunya wa adab al akhirah. Allahumma aghfir lil mu'mini mu'minat wa al muslimin muslimat. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا أذاب النار وعكب الصلاة